Hi, my name is Pratish Datta. I am a research scientist at NDT Research. I will be presenting the paper Decentralized Multi Authority ABE for DNFs from LWE, which is my joint work with my co authors Ilan Komar Gotsky and Brent Waters. Attribute based encryption or ABE for short is an advanced variant of public key encryption. In case of ABE, a secret key allows the decryption of a ciphertext if and only if some access policy is satisfied by some set of attributes. ABE has two flavors, namely key policy and ciphertext policy. In the key policy setting, the secret key is associated with the policy and the ciphertext is associated with a set of attributes. And for the ciphertext policy, the roles of the policy and the attribute set are switched. So in more detail, the syntax of ABE as follows. There is a central authority who runs a set of algorithm to publish a master public key pk and keeps the corresponding master secret key msk to itself then there is a key gen algorithm which is also run by the central authorities in case of key policy it takes as input a policy f and for ciphertext policy it takes as input an attribute set u and in both cases it outputs a user secret key sk then there is an encryption algorithm which can be run by any party in the system to encrypt some message msg under the master public key in case of key policy the encryption is done with respect to some attribute set u and for ciphertext policy it's done with respect to some policy f then there is a decryption algorithm a user possessing a secret key can take a ciphertext and can decrypt to reveal something the correctness says that if the associated policy is satisfied by the associated set of attributes then this decrypted something should be actually the encrypted message and if the policy is not satisfied then the encrypted message should remain completely hidden even against the collusion of several users in the system in case of abe by this time we have a long sequence of exciting works which has achieved great milestones both in the key policy and in the ciphertext policy setting in the key policy starting with the initial works of sahai and water 05 then goel pandes high waters 06 and so on and in the ciphertext policy starting with the works of betham course high water 07 followed by waters 11 and so on in all these works we were able to progressively achieve highly expressive access policies such as nc1 or d DFAs and also strong adaptive security and uh, very good ciphertext and key sizes. But all these constructions are in the bilinear map setting. So we can simply say that in the bilinear map setting, there is little gap between the key policy and the ciphertext policy constructions. However, in the non bilinear map setting, for instance, in the lattice or LW based setting, the situation is completely different. Here we are interested in non bilinear map setting and especially for the LW setting for two reasons. Firstly, if we can create a scheme under various assumptions, it naturally increases the confidence in that primitive. And secondly, we are actually interested in a post quantum secure scheme. And since LWE is believed to be post quantum secure, so we are interested in LW based schemes here. In the LW based setting, we have the works of GBW13, BGG plus 14, which are in the key policy setting, and they were able to actually achieve all circuits as policies. And also, they were able to achieve very good parameters for ciphertext and key sizes. However, in case of ciphertext policy setting for the LW based regime, the situation is quite worse. For instance, until very recently, the only known way to get an LW based CPABE is via an universal circuit based generic transformation proposed in GPSW08. However, this transformation would result in schemes with very bad parameters for ciphertext and key sizes, and also it requires setting an upper bound on the policy size allowed in the system. And then the ciphertext and key sizes both scale with that upper bound, which is really bad. Recently, there have been some exciting attempts by Agarwal and Yamada into the problem. In one of their schemes, they were able to remove this upper bound restriction, but that scheme do require bilinear maps along with LWE. And in another scheme, they were able to achieve the ideal ciphertext and key size parameters, but they still require that upper bound on the policy size. So the problem of 
constructing CPABE under LWE that does not require the upper bound and at the same time achieves ideal parameters for cybertext and key sizes is essentially open. That means there is a wide gap between the key policy and the ciphertext policy setting under the LWE world. We will now turn our attention into an extended version of APE which is called multi-authority ABE or MAABE in short. As we mentioned in case of ABE there is a central authority that holds the master secret key and is responsible for verifying the attributes of all the users and issuing secret keys to them. However, in reality, there is no single authority who controls all the attributes. Rather, there are several authorities which controls different attributes. For instance, the DMP offices control the attributes for driving license, universities controls attributes for PhD, and military controls attributes for being a veteran. In order to handle such distributed nature of attribute possession, this MAABE primitive were introduced in the literature and studied in the works of Chase 07, LW11, OT13 and so on. In an MAABE, any party can become an authority at any point of time and there is no coordination required with any other party except the generation of a global public parameters that is available to all the parties in the system. The different authorities would control different attributes in the system and there would be no bound on the number of authorities that can ever come into existence during the lifetime of the system and all the authorities would be able to issue secret keys to users for attributes under their control without any coordination with any other authority in the system. Let's consider an example. Suppose there are three authorities in the system, one is DMP, one is the university and another one is the military and then there are three users in the system. The first one gets a key from DMP for driving license, then the second and third one, both of whom have PhD, gets the corresponding keys from the university and the third gets a key for veteran from the military. Now consider this another guy who wants to encrypt two messages, one is high, another one is by, so it encrypts high under the policy PhD and driver's license and it encrypts by under the policy PhD and veteran. Now observe that the third has both the attributes PhD and veteran would be able to decrypt the ciphertext CT2, this is the correctness of the scheme, but since none of the users has the attribute for both PhD and driver's license, none of them would be able to decrypt the ciphertext CT1 which is actually the pollution resistance that is required from the MMEB scheme. The question is how an user in the system can be uniquely identified because there are different authorities. So if we cannot identify a user in the system uniquely, so it may happen that the user can pretend to be a different user to different authorities and is successful in getting keys for attributes which it does not even possess. In order to handle this, a model called a global identifier or GID model is considered in the literature. In this model, each user is assigned a globally verifiable identifier. This global identifier of the users would remain the same for the entire lifetime of the system and the users would not have any freedom to choose their global identifiers on their own. For instance, you can consider the social security number as the global identifier of an user. Here we would consider one attribute per authority. The syntax of an MAABE is as follows. There is a global setup algorithm which outputs a global public parameter GP. Then there is an authority setup algorithm which is run by a party when appearing as an authority. It runs this algorithm on input the global public parameter and for the attribute that it would control and it outputs a public key PKU for that attribute which it publishes. It keeps the corresponding master secret key MSKU to itself. Now in order to generate a key for a user with global identifier GID and for the attribute U, it would run the keygen algorithm and generates a secret key that is associated with GID and U and gives it to the user. Now there is an encryption algorithm which is basically the same as the encryption algorithm for ABE. Any party can encrypt a message under some policy F by taking as input all the authority public keys that features in the policy and the global public parameters to generate a ciphertext. And there is a decryption algorithm by which a user can decrypt a ciphertext 
by accumulating the different keys for the different attributes it obtained from the different authorities note that all the secret keys has to be with respect to the same global identifier gid or that means for the same user and it decrypts something the correctness says that if the policy is satisfied this decrypted something should be the same as the encrypted message and if the policy is not satisfied then the encrypted message should remain hidden and here the pollution among the users along with some corrupt authorities is allowed we will now highlight the main works that are available in the literature before this work one is very celebrated result by Luco and waters who constructed a scheme for nc1 achieves adaptive security under the subgroup disassociation in composite order bilinear groups then later okamoto and takashima translate to the prime order setting and achieves the security under the dealing assumption then in 2015 dowsalakis and waters presented another scheme for nc1 which achieves only static security under Q type assumption but the advantage of this scheme over the previous two scheme is that here the number of attributes per authority is essentially unbounded. Importantly all those schemes are in the GID model and relies on random oracle for their security. This is the scheme that we got. We were able to design a scheme for DNF under the lovely assumption and it achieves the static security same as the Rouse Lucky's water scheme here we were able to allow a bounded number of attributes for authority so our main result in this work is as follows we've shown that there exists a multi-authority abe scheme in the gid model for access policies represented as dnfs that is secure against an arbitrary collusion of parties in the random oracle model and assuming the lwe assumption so DNFs, as we know, is the OR of ANDs, and the NWA assumption that we require for this work is actually the sub-exponential modulus to noise ratio one. We would now highlight what are the main challenges in constructing the multi-authority ABE scheme. In case of ABE, a central authority provides keys to individuals for all the attributes in their possession. In order to achieve pollution resistance, a fresh randomness is used to tie together the different key components that is specific to a user. It is required that the different key components that is issued to a user would be compatible within themselves but should not be compatible with the key components of another user. Now in a multi-authority setting there is no central authority instead there are several authorities. Then how to get this same randomness for tying together different key components. The randomness to tie together different key components is obtained by applying a hash function h on the global identifier of the user. It means basically that this randomness should be public or publicly computable. Unfortunately, all the existing LWB CPAB schemes fail to achieve this public randomness feature, so they cannot be readily extended to the MAB setting. The second challenge is that as we said that in an MAABE, any party can be able to become an authority on the fly. So that means master public key and the user secret keys should have some piecewise structure. It should consist of pieces where each piece is associated with one attribute in the system. Just as the previous property, all the existing LWE based CPAB schemes currently fails to achieve this property as well. In this work, we make use of linear secret sharing schemes for representing our access policies. As we all know, a secret sharing scheme is a scheme by which it is possible to distribute some secret among a set of parties such that certain designated subset of the parties would be able to recover that secret while others can't. A linear secret sharing scheme is a special type of secret sharing scheme where the shared generation and the reconstruction processes are linear. A linear secret sharing scheme or LSSS is actually equivalent to another computational model which is called a span program. A span program is represented by some matrix M and some function rho. The matrix M is a matrix of some dimension L by S over some finite field ZQ and rho is a function which labels each row of this matrix with either only the set of parties in case of monotone LSSS, while the set of parties 
union, the negation of the set of parties in case of non monotone LSSs. The LSSs that we use in this work requires two special properties. Firstly, the reconstruction coefficients should be small, for instance, coming from the set 0, 1. And the second property is the linear independence property, which states that any unauthorized subset of rows of the shared generating matrix should be linearly independent among themselves. There was already such a non monotone LSSS for block space implicit in the work of GPW13. This has been pointed out to us after the publication of our paper on ePrint. However, in this work, we also present an independent non monotone LSSS with those same properties for NC1. There is also such a monotone LSSS for the policy class DNFs that has been proposed in the works of Agrawal et al. and Luke Waters 11. And we have to use both non monotone and monotone LSSS in this work, as we will see shortly. So currently, one open problem is how to get a monotone LSSS with the two properties required for our work for the policy class more than DNFs. That is, for instance, maybe for NC1 or more. Here, I would like to mention one point. The only reason that we get our MAABE for DNFs is actually that currently we don't know some monotone LSSS with its true properties for some policy class more than DNFs. So if in future we get such a scheme, then our MAABE would be directly translated to that policy class for which we would get that LSSS. This is the roadmap of our work. We first start with a non-monotone LSSS with the small reconstruction coefficient and linear independence properties for some policy class C. And using that, we construct an LWE based CPABE for the policy class C. This construction is a direct construction, not via any generic transformation. And our CPABE interestingly satisfies two important properties. First one is that the randomness tying together the different key components is essentially publicly computable. And secondly, that the keys, that means the public keys and the user secret keys, has the piecewise structure. So as we already mentioned, these two properties are actually very essential for extension to the multi-authority scheme. And by virtue of these two properties, we are able to extend our CPABE to an MAABE scheme. And our extension is non-generic. That means it's not via any generic compiler, but uses the special structures. For doing that, Instead of using the non-monotone LSSS, we use a monotone LSSS with the linear independence and small reconstruction coefficient properties. The reason why we had to use monotone LSSS and not the non-monotone LSSS is that in case of standard CPABE, a central authority enforces the fact that a user either gets a key for an attribute or its negation. However, in case of MAABE, an adversary colluding with the corrupt authority can have both which breaks the security of LSSS and therefore breaks the security of MAABE. Now, I would like to give a somewhat informal description of our CPABE, avoiding several technical details, which is not required for understanding the functionality though, and is only appears in the rigorous security proof of the scheme. So first is the setup algorithm, which takes as input the security parameter and an attribute universe U, and it proceeds as follows. For all the attributes u in the attribute universe, it generates a matrix A u over the field CQ that is dimension n by m and its trapdoor by the usual trapdoor sampling algorithm and also it samples another matrix H u for each of the attribute u in the attribute universe over the field CQ that is also of dimension n by m and it additionally samples a vector y of dimension n over the field CQ. The master public key consists of all the sampled AU and HU matrices for all the attributes U of the attribute universe along with the vector Y. And the master secret key consists of the master public key and the trapdoors for all the AU matrices for all the U's. Next is the key generation algorithm which takes as input the master secret key and an attribute set U which is a subset of the attribute universe and it proceeds as follows. 
it first samples a vector t hat of dimension a minus 1 from some appropriate noise distribution and forms a vector t which is 1 comma t hat then for each of the attribute u that appears in the attribute set it computes a vector k u which is basically the pre-image of the vector h u times t transpose under the matrix a u and for computation of that it, it uses the trapdoor for the matrix a u the secret key is k u for that two set u consists of all these computed k u vectors for all the u's in the set capital u along with the vector t so note that the randomness that is tying together the different key components k u is the vector t and this is actually publicly computable it does not require any secret to sample the vector t hat and therefore the vector t as we pointed out already this public nature of the randomness is absolutely crucial for extending to our multi-authority scheme next is the encryption algorithm which takes us into the master public key a message bit msg and an lss access policy m row it proceeds as follows suppose m is an l by s dimensional matrix it first samples a uh, vector s of dimension n over zq and also s minus 1 many vectors v2 up to vs of dimension m over zq Next, for each row i of the matrix M, it computes the vector ci and ci hat as follows. ci is basically s times a row i, that is the row i -th a matrix plus some appropriate noise, and then ci hat is the i -th row mi times the matrix whose first entry is sy transpose and rest are 0, and the remaining rows are v2 up to vs minus s times h row i matrix plus another appropriate noise. The ciphertext consists of this ci and ci hat vectors along with another bit c which is the most significant bit of the quantity s y transpose XOR with the message bit msg next is the decryption algorithm it takes as input a secret key sku for some attribute set u and the ciphertext ct so if the attribute set u does not satisfy the access policy m row associated with the ciphertext then it outputs what otherwise this process as follows Suppose i is the set of rows of the matrix of the LSSS associated with the ciphertext for which the user possesses the attributes. And let wi be the reconstruction coefficients. In order to decrypt, the user first computes the quantity k prime, which is the sum over all the rows in the set i of the quantity wi times ci times k row i transpose plus ci hat times t transpose. It outputs the quantity msc prime, which is the most significant bit of this quantity k prime, exhort with c. So this is the correctness. Consider the expression c i k rho i transpose plus c i hat t transpose. If you substitute the expressions for c i and c i hat and ignore the noise terms, it basically becomes s a rho i k rho i transpose plus m i times that big matrix times t transpose minus s times h rho i times t transpose now remember that by construction a rho i k rho i transpose is basically h rho i t transpose so by this computation the a rho i k rho i transpose and h rho i t transpose gets cancelled and what remains if you sum it over multiplying with the reconstruction coefficient it basically is going to give you s y this is the correctness unfortunately i don't have time to go into the security and also cannot explain our mab scheme in detail i would like to encourage you to look into our full paper which is available on imprint so in conclusion in this work we present the first mab scheme from lwe assumption for some non-trivial class of access policies and we also give a direct approach towards constructing a CPAB scheme under LWE assumption. There are several open problems. Firstly, can we construct an MAABE from LWE for some more expressive access policies than DNFs? Secondly, can we get stronger security? Here, we only get static security. Thirdly, can we get better parameters? For example, better sizes of ciphertext and secret keys. Here, all the sizes scale with the worst case policy size bound on the system lastly can we allow an unbounded number of attributes per authority in this work we are only able to allow some bounded number of attributes per authorities 
Thank you very much for your attention.